Hello Travelers, Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot. Today is October 6th, 2016. I said I wouldn't be back until Friday, but I uh, just was in the mood. My guides were saying I should put down a spread. So this is going to be another open reading. I would like to welcome all of my new subscribers. Howdy. And I'd like to thank all of my um, regular subscribers for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. Those of you who have gotten readings from me thus far, I want to thank you as well, really, for allowing me to read for you. Um, for those of you who might be interested in a reading or some of my other services, I do Akashic Records, Etheric Cord Cutting. I just got certified in hypnotherapy, so I'm going to be bringing some uh, hypnotherapy and past life regression stuff to you guys. Um, working hard behind the scenes. Um, usually you can go here in the little, I'm trying to get my finger, right hand corner here, and there should be like a little eye or something that'll come across. If you click on that, um, it will take you over directly to my website. I ask that before you go straight to the booking page, that you please read the first page, which is called Important Information on Booking. That tells you everything that you need to know you don't have to send extra emails to let me know that you've paid or that you've installed or, or whatever. It's set up so that once you make the payment and you fill out the form, I have everything. So that's all you need to do. I was trying to figure out a way to integrate uh, a form with payment in it. Haven't been able to figure that one out yet. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, this is going to be an open reading. So it's not going to be specifically for any zodiac sign, sun sign. Uh, there is no specific time frame for it. Um, I can say that the energies feel wholly different. I think this year with the eclipses and all of the retrogrades was really, really tough. Um, I feel, I don't know about you, a little bit lightened. That's not to say that we don't have, still have challenges facing us, but it just doesn't seem as urgent, okay? That's how I feel. So I have with me today, I'm just going to bring you the um, the Radiant White deck. That's a deck that most people are familiar with. And I also have the Sibylas for clarification. So I've already done some pre-shuffling. I just had a wonderful lunch uh, with, a, with a male friend. Um, great conversation. We laughed and we talked. And I hadn't been out and done that in quite some time. So and for all of you who are wondering if love is going to come, get out there. That's what I say. Life is short. All right, let me put another good shuffle on these. And then we're going to lay the spread. Again, this is general for no specific uh, zodiac sign, sun sign. In no specific time frame. So if you if this resonates with you and you'd like more clarity, that requires a personal reading. And personal readings, what I do is I take your name and your birth date and I meditate. I ask my guides to come in with the cards and uh, focus on pulling in your energy. And then that specific that reading ends up being specifically to answer your questions. General readings, you know, just that general. So the messages will not resonate with everyone. Here we go. Nine cards down. I'm going to be back tomorrow with the Hidden Lotus spread, so tune in for that. Wow. I think what I'm looking at, these are still some, some type of um, eclipse energies. Uh, the energies of an eclipse can go all the way out three months, sometimes to three years. It just depends. Underneath the deck, I have the Knight of Wands. So this is the overall energy of the spread. Um, the nine cards are the Emperor. I'll show you the cards. A lot of readers don't show you the cards, so I'm going to show you the cards. Though. The World. The Four of Swords. The Tower. Always an impressive card when I see it. The Ten of Cups and the Justice card. Death or number 13. 
and this is karma people the seven of wands which is probably why this card has come out and then I have this um, queen of swords overall energy is the knight of spread um, the way the cards are read past present future past present future and then of course there's a different interplay a lot of people are like well you know this that and the other well what happens I can't speak for other readers but what happens with me is that um, I have a linear fashion in starting to read but then once I get into the reading um, a story starts to emerge out of the cards and so they literally talk to me I know that sounds strange but um, they emerge with the story now you know I've got pretty much all four elements represent fire water air and earth um, so this reading could encompass may resonate in some way shape or form a little bit with everybody so we'll see what the cards have to say um, I have one two three four five major arcana and the major arcana um, hold more sway over the reading in other words they have more influence over the messages than your pip cards and our pip cards are the ten of cups the seven of wands and the queen of swords um, and the four of swords uh, the court cards the kings queens pages and knights don't have numbers but everything else does um, our focus is this ten of cups and this is the card of extreme emotional contentment okay this is having enough of everything and feeling as though all of your cups are full so full that you're able to share your joy and your happiness your abundance with others as you can see we have this uh, family scene here the couple uh, there's the children dancing around um, there's a house in the background green pastures there's fresh water there's a, a stream running through um, but what you can't really see in this card is there is like a, a cloud there's a cloud underneath the, the rainbow there and it's gray now in the tarot gray clouds indicate some kind of confusion I don't know how that's going to come into play I do feel that perhaps there may be uh, looking at this tower card here but the reverse aspect or negative aspect of the ten of cups could be illusionary that you have there's an illusion surrounding what you think this scene in the card represents okay maybe you have some fantasies about it maybe you have some illusions maybe you assume that everything should be perfect you've got the perfect wife or the perfect husband the perfect house the perfect job you've got the perfect 2.5 kids you have the perfect family vacations but cracks may be beginning to show um, because really the imagery of the cups in the rainbow what are rainbows if they're not illusions they're simply water droplets that are lit up by the sun in a particular way that causes the rainbow to you know be visible to the naked eye um, the light uh, and the colors the spectrum of the rainbow are always present you just don't always get to see them okay um, there's something I the cards are telling me to say about that but I, I can't it's not quite clear yet so what I'm looking at here is I see this Emperor now if this is not a fire sign male this is going to be someone who can be authoritarian stern uh, wants to follow the rules very very logical uh, doesn't allow emotion to come too much into play but we know that in order for someone to become an emperor they do have to have a quote unquote softer side you can't always go and whoop up on people sometimes you gotta be diplomatic and you have to be kind that's how you get to be the emperor um, and this emperor person he is also the archetypal father of the tarot so this could be someone who has children okay or it can be a mentor or a father figure um, now this emperor has come 
to the end of a cycle. We have the world card here. And this is the last of the major arcana. And this means that all of the challenges, all of the obstacles, everything that you've dealt with, let's say in the past year, um, you're about to come, that's going to kind of fade away and you're going to be able to start fresh and anew because the next card is the Fool card, okay? So it would make sense, and this card represents Saturn. It's an Earth. This is about uh, maybe resting, taking a break, stepping back, taking some time for yourself, and then contemplating where you want to go next. This is really, I think, I, this card to me always speaks to a withdrawal. This is someone who, in a sense, is present, okay, in one sense, but what they're doing is they're resting. This is an effigy. There's there's nobody. This is not a real person. The uh, assumption is that this knight is lying under the crypt, okay? So in a sense, this could be even a 12th house energy, um, the subterranean. This is someone who has taken time out. He's put his swords up on the wall, but he's also got one ready to grab should he need to crawl out of that crypt, okay? But nevertheless, this is um, someone contemplating not only the past, okay, of where they're coming from, but we know that this is going to be changing into the fool. So they've got to think, they've got to give some thought. So this emperor may be, um, if this is someone you're dealing with and maybe they seem a bit out of sorts, this could be why. Because coming in on the past vertical column, there has been a major shakeup for this emperor, okay, that has brought about a complete and total utter ending. This is what the number 13 card says. Now, this card represents Uranus, and Uranus energy, it also represents Mars, okay? So this is also about aggression, fighting, um, arguments, violence. Um, but after these events take place, it's like a clearing of the air. All of a sudden you recognize whatever it is that you were supposed to be saying about the situation. And this has brought about an end. Now, this card is the Scorpio card and Scorpio has two rulers. It has Pluto and also Mars. Okay. So this is all eighth house energies here. And this is about clearing away old things so that you can literally make room for the new. That's why we have the world card has come out. So it would stand to reason, okay, that this person, and it could be that they are kind of in between, you know, they know that an ending, you know, it doesn't even matter because when this card shows up, there's something that has occurred. Now, maybe they're still working out how the ending is going to end, okay? And this is why they're in a contemplative mode. They've taken a withdrawal and a timeout. But it definitely has to do with their home life or what they consider to be their family and home life, okay? Um, this could even be an announcement suddenly that somebody wants to get a divorce. I have the justice card here. Uh, this is definitely uh, could be... And I do feel, in some respects, it is a major breakup or major separation. Things have just gotten to the point where maybe, you know, someone's been trying to hang on, hang on, and hang on. That's what Scorpio does. Scorpio don't never want to let go of no shit. And maybe this is somebody trying to hang on to whatever their perfect idea is. But the the tower comes in to say, okay, look, since you you don't want to face up to the truth of the situation, then here, let me just create a situation and just tear all this shit down because it is indicative of not having a firm foundation, what the home life is all about. Um, this could be erratic energies around the house, things not being settled, um, no schedules, no set way of doing things, lots of chaos in the house, and this is, you know, that crap has to come to an end. Why? Justice says, well, it's time now. So whenever I see these two cards together, whatever this event is all about, it is brought about through karma. And that's and this is also the sign of Libra. And Libra is the balance. 
Um, you know that Libra didn't even exist for a little while. It used to be Virgo and then Scorpio. And then the astrologers got together and decided that they needed a, a time to fit in for um, the fall season. So they brought in the scales to balance out that time between Virgo, the end of summer, and the autumn. Um, and it's all about the balance, the scales, being fair. It is the house. It represents the house of relationships, um, marriages, one-to-one -one interpersonal relationships. But it also really, if you have um, some factors in Libra, can also bring about open enemies and conflicts. Most of the time, it's about divorces. And typically, uh, under eclipses, um, couples separate. Okay? It's just because it's time. The universe wants to move move the couples forward as individuals. Now, this card also represents some truth. Okay? It represents truth. So here we have the death card has come in. And the death card has come in to try to sweep away all of this. This is a karmic card. Yeah? Because nobody can cheat it. Eventually change will come. You can fight it as long as you want. But eventually something has to change. The universe is always in flux. It's never static. Nothing ever stays the same, no matter how much you want to believe that it does. And this could be someone staking, trying to stake their claim. This is a, the seven of wands. This is not the five of wands. The five of wands indicates outside influences coming in and, and disturbing the peace, so to speak. This is all about a, a spiritual fight. This could literally be whatever. Someone could be depressed. They could be sick. They can be ill. And they are literally in a spiritual fight. Okay. Um, they have so many things coming at them at once. We can see that this emperor is trying to um, gain some type of perspective. He's probably trying to withdraw from this. Okay. But what I find most interesting is this queen of swords here at the bottom. Now, this would be an air sign female or have the qualities of an air sign female. And what I mean by that is um, the queen of swords is known as the divorcee card. And I don't really like that because it makes, gives the impression that divorcees are bitter and bitchy and not all divorcees are that way. Um, but she represents someone who is very good with words She's very articulate. Uh, she writes very well. She may be a dentist, a doctor, a surgeon. Um, she may work in editing, publishing. Uh, this would be hard copy and across the web. Um, she's someone who is able to get her point across. Um, she can be extremely piercing and direct with her with her communications. Um, and she may seem quite unapproachable. Um but that's only because she's been through some shit. She didn't get to be the queen of swords by being a wimp. Okay. See, she's got that sword there and she's like inviting the truth to come in. But she's like, you know, if I don't like what I hear. I'm just going to cut your shit to shreds. I'm not going to be dealing with that. And what's most interesting is that this whole vertical column is swords. And she's also holding the facsimile of the sword of truth. So this tells me. That this queen is someone who's going to be pivotal to this emperor. I have this ten of cups here in between the two of them. Now, what I'm looking at is that this queen has been on a timeout as well. But now something is about to come in where she's going to have to embody this energy. Whether this is, uh, and this is whether, you know, same sex or heterosexual, okay? Um... She has been perhaps at rest, um, not communicating, um, kind of playing her cards close to the vest, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> but something's about to come in and shake her world as well, um, where all of a sudden she's going to have to be in this particular posture. And that's interesting to me. Um, but the thing about the Queen of Swords is not someone who should be feared. Um, she is someone who is not going to put up with anybody walking all over her or uh, treating her badly or being disrespectful, 
lying or cheating. She's just not going to put up with that. Um, and maybe that's why she is poised because something, if it has not occurred, it's like it's coming. Now I'm trying to see if I have any repeater numbers and I do not. Now over here, I have the emperor justice and the death card. We know that a situation here has ended because it ends in death, but working across the front row, okay, or, I'm sorry, the future row, death is headed into this situation. So there's a change coming, and I feel that this queen of swords is pivotal to whatever this situation is all about. Right down the center, again, the world card, that's the end of a cycle with this ten of cups. And there is a real struggle. Someone's going through a real struggle. Um, and perhaps why this queen is taking the stance, have, has taken this stance, or will be taking this stance, is because we have the Knight of Wands here. Now, the Knight of Wands, to me, the Knights always represent some kind of events. Okay? They can represent people. Um, someone returning someone coming in quite quickly and suddenly, maybe unexpectedly. Um, but to me, it always represents an event, like you get some kind of news that comes in quite suddenly, okay? Um, the message may be all haphazard and reckless and you may not quite understand it. Maybe this is why she is preparing to be in this energy um, or will need to be in that energy because she's going to have to make sense of what it is that she's hearing or that she's seeing. Um, I want to take the Sibelis on this. And it's almost as if the cards are saying on this row that this queen has been in a timeout as well because she was supposed to be. It's like she's being prepared for something. Something completely unexpected. Now, this doesn't mean that it's it's bad. The tower doesn't always mean that there's something bad that's going to happen to you. It can literally mean a sudden, just a sudden change, an un, a completely unexpected change. Um, and in a way, the way the cards you're reading, it's going to be a change around, again, the home life or what you consider your idea of this Ten of Cups is. Um, I think this is being weighed up by both this emperor and this queen. I don't know if they know each other. Um, if it were the empress here, I would say that this is a couple. So I would tend to think, you know, royalty kind of knows each other. They may not hang out at each other's kingdoms and do all the soirees and stuff, but... Um, this would be a situation where the man has perhaps more power or more finances or more property than this queen. So I'm not exactly sure if they know each other or not. Uh, I would say that there is some kind of connection here. Maybe this is a good friend, I, you know, somebody that you consider part of the family. I don't know. So we're going to see what the cards have, the, the Sabilas have to tell us. Justice and death. I don't know if this is uh, literally the passing of someone. And if it is, it might be for this emperor. Um, because of the way the... The three cards are... Now, what's interesting to me is that both the figure in justice is clothed in red as well as the emperor. So I'm going to say that if this is not uh, a family member, blood ties, then it is someone indeed that perhaps uh, was very close. Um,
what's also interesting is the four figures in the corner of the world card. Taurus, Earth, Leo, Fire, the Eagle, Scorpio, the Man, Aquarius. Um, and I say that because I have Scorpio, Scorpio, and then all of this air, the end of a cycle. It's like um, whatever this event is, it brings about some type of realization, uh, self-realization uh, for someone. And it also looks this way as if this has been, somebody may have been contemplating this, but they never made a move. So the universe came in to move it along. All right, let's take a look and see what the uh, tower card has to say here. That card is always impressive. It could even be like some sudden news coming in, uh, some epiphany, some aha moment. Um, you know that saying, oh, I'm struck by lightning. Something quite, well, Lamika, the friend, the confidant, the relationship of trust. La donna de servizio, she's a helper and she's always positive. So this was a relationship that I guess would have been considered very helpful in some way or shape or form. La vecchia senora, she speaks to a change. What's interesting is that there are also three women in this particular grouping of cards, but it comes on the tower. So this could be, I think, it is speaking to some kind of breakup or divorce. Let's see what the justice card has to say. Oh no, I yeah, let me look at the Justice card. I wanted to take a look at that Four of Swords to see what it's telling me. Um, everybody else is either seated or they're in action. But here we have someone suspended in time. Um, even though this is the end of a cycle and the wreath would imply peace, contentment, and tranquility, and balance. She's holding the two wands. The figure is nevertheless trapped inside of the wreath. They have not stepped outside into the energy of the fool yet. Because it is Saturn, Saturn represents restrictions, a not yet moment. It's not time for you to step out of that space that you're in yet. And it looks like someone may have been trying to, in a sense, fight against that. They've been trying to stay in that space. Okay, because it made him feel really good. Extreme emotional contentment. So let's look at the Justice card. Look. Let me just put the rest of the cards down. Now, see, I was saying, it's like they, they didn't want to leave that space. The Justice card. The inability to act, the prigione, constraint. Dilerante, stupid actions and stupid behaviors. Speranza, this is the hope. Now, it can read two ways. Someone was really hoping that they were going to be able to continue doing whatever it was that they were doing. 
but justice in the tower has come into say, uh-uh. Uh, more than likely, when things like this happen, you're on the wrong track. And this is the universe trying to, to correct you, to bring you back into some self-correction and back into alignment with where it is you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, the people that you're supposed to be hanging around with or having in your life. But Speranza can also speak to fear. That is the negative aspect of this card. So someone was afraid to move due to fear. Um, they were hopeful. And maybe they didn't move because they were afraid that, well, it doesn't matter why <laughs> really um, because fear can immobilize you it can hold you hostage and hold you prisoner um, what's that motto feel the fear and do it anyway sometimes that's what you have to do you only live once <clears throat> you're not going to remember this from your next incarnation if you decide to incarnate again after you die you're not going to remember any of this crap consciously so this may be an opportunity to put old karma to rest and affect any new karma coming in for the next incarnation. But fear has been preventing someone from moving forward. All right. Now, I want to look at this four of swords here. I don't really have to, but I'm just curious what the card's trying to tell me. Somewhat withdrawing and giving thought. Now, to me, the most, I don't know, kind of odd card in this trio, the three cards are the precious presence. This is a gift, not unselfish. The militare. Now, the actual meaning of the card is a uh, uh, relationship with law enforcement. This guy could be a police officer or a soldier, a general, something like that. She could be a police officer. Maybe she's a damn detective. How do I know? Um, this is getting caught. This is the literal meaning of the car or relationship with law enforcement. But then if you think about what troop movements, what troops do, sometimes they do things behind the scenes. A, a little subterfuge, a little disinformation. Um, black ops, you know, you don't know nothing's going on, but they're scaling down the wall. And then a trip or a visit. So I think that this is someone giving some reflection over something that they obviously feel there's a value in. Maybe the person feels as though they're caught, okay? Or maybe they're trying to work something out where there could be an actual visit. This is in the future position, on the future row. That's why I tell you, something's coming for this Queen of Swords. Um, something's coming. Let's take a look at this Queen. No, I, I'm gonna take a look at the Seven of Wands and then we're gonna close the cards down. What is the battle? Because this this is between death, the change coming up. And it's almost like this queen doesn't even see it coming. Um, and maybe that Militare card is speaking to her. But this card touches these two cards. See, someone's thinking about a change. But maybe they've been thinking so long that the universe just decided to come in and mix some shit up so that it will happen. But now, as we all know, people have free will. And that's why that Knight of Wands there, I think, is the key to the whole spread. I think I'm going to pull cards on that. I wasn't going to. That definitely tells me something's coming. 
um, look at the horses. Look at the horses. And this is meeting death head on, the change head on. But there's something coming up in between the two. Funny. Funny, funny. What's the what's the struggle here? Now this represents Mars and Leo, and if you know anybody, Mars is is a fire sign. I mean, a fire planet. And remember, I was talking about arguments and fights and whatnot. And then Leo is also, you know, has big ego. And I don't necessarily mean that in another way, but this could really be somebody trying to fight against the with the seven says that they're fighting against themselves. They're fighting against themselves. Wow. <laughs> what do you know? Lamonte, the female lover. The morte. Twice now death has come out. And then the domestico. Now, this speaks to a lover in the past, be it male or, you know, same sex or heterosexual. There was an ending with this lover in the past, but death comes in. Death comes in. Death comes in. There's a new or second chance. And that's really what death is all about. It is a rebirth. It is a second opportunity, but it's on a different plane. Um, this domestical um, can be simply the imagery of the card, the man returning. But the domestico is uh, a collaborator. He takes messages back and forth. Um, he may not tell you exactly the way the message is supposed to be. He may give you hints and clues. He may not have all of the information. Um, or he could simply change it up to um, benefit himself. This is what the struggle is over. That's why I say something is coming and that's why this woman is supposed to be in this particular um, energy. She's going to have to be because this is like it's <laughs> it's going to be a surprise I think and a shock. Something completely unexpected. Um, and she's all about the truth as is the justice. That's what I'm saying. So if this is somebody that you know trying to come back and they all acting all shady, bam, raise the sword. <laughs> Don't talk to the hand. Talk to the sword, okay? Because there needs to be some truth here. All right, let's take a quick look at what this Knight of Wands is talking about. That's some shit. And that's going to be hard to do with this character. Because he's going to want to control how things go. But see... If he's been paying attention, he would know that he don't got control over shit. See? It's an illusion. You can get up and move around and do stuff, make it look like you're in control. But quite frankly, with the natural laws, you have no control. And I've got one, two, three, four, five major arcana cards. So pretty much it's out of your hands. Knight of Wands. Let's see what he's having to say. Happiness of the heart. Conversations. Holy smokes. Now, I don't need to say nothing else about that. That is what I have for you. Um... I hope that, oh wow, look what's underneath the deck. That is what I have for you. True love is not dead, people. Believe, believe. I hope that message helped. And until next time, namaste.